Alright, so in this video we're going to go over Angular Impulse and this isn't going to be a lab for you guys to turn in, this is just going to be a review and it should be for test 2 because that's how Dr. Ricard has had it set up in the past couple semesters. So first thing I want to go over is just touch on Newton's Law of Angular Acceleration which is on page 150 in the book. So it gives a good example of what all this stuff means and how, how to apply it. So if you kind of have a general understanding of it, it will help with the problems that you guys will have to do for the test. So basically what it's saying is that the angular impulse is equal to the angular momentum, which is another way to say that torque times time is equal to the moment of inertia times the final angular velocity minus the moment of inertia times the initial angular velocity. All right. So for the angular impulse stuff, the first problem that we're going to look at is number one, which deals with attaining the height but this time we're going to be using energy. So it involves a few steps, but it's really simple because it's just plugging in numbers to four equations actually. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to solve for potential energy, then we need to solve for kinetic energy, then we need to solve for total energy, and then from that we can determine height. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and just write up the equations and then we'll move into the problem. So potential energy is just mass times gravity times the height. Kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity of the y squared. Total energy is just kinetic energy plus potential energy. And then height is equal to energy over mass times gravity. So what we're going to do is first we need to solve for potential energy. So put this in here and we have our mass, which is 60, our gravity, which is always 9.8. But for this stuff, um, gravity is going to be negative or positive. So this is the only time where gravity is going to be a positive number. So just keep in mind anytime that we're dealing with energy that you can just keep the gravity being a positive number and then times the height which is 4.2 so insert math here and you get 2469.6 so now we've got our potential energy so we'll move on to kinetic energy which is one half times the mass which is 60 times the vy squared which is 3.7 squared. So insert math and we get 410.7. So now the last thing we need to do is find energy. The total energy which is just with the potential plus the kinetic. So we end up with 2469.6 plus 410.7 and that's equal to 2880.3. So now we've got our total energy and we can do the last step to find the height like the problem is asking. So we have height is equal to the total energy over mass times gravity. So our height is going to be equal to 2880.3 divided by 60 times 9.8. So we'll do our math and we get total height of 4.9 meters. So this is pretty simple. It's just taking four equations and then just doing it piece by piece to get the final answer. So it's kind of similar to the center of mass stuff. But other than that, that's it for problem one. All right, so for number three, we're gonna go over the moment of inertia and angular velocity. So it, the problem is asking us to find the angular momentum at takeoff angular momentum and angular velocity while in the air, so at a later point in time. So the first thing you want to do, same thing that we did before, is just write out all the variables. So we have our moment of inertia is equal to 12.2, our angular velocity is equal to 2.9, and that is all that we're given to start. So what we need to do is use our formula here to find the angular momentum. So that is going to be the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia 
times the angular velocity. So for the first part here, simple, we have this right here is equal to 12.2 times 2.9. So then that's how we're going to solve for the angular momentum. And then when we do our math here, we just get 35.38. And the units for angular momentum uh, are going to be kilograms times meters squared per second. And so the next thing that we need to do is while the diver's in the air, we need to assess their angular momentum as well as their angular velocity. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did here, just with different numbers. So we've solved for our, our angular momentum. So we're going to use the angular momentum that we got for this next part here. So we'll put in 35.38 is equal to the moment of inertia, which is given in the problem as it changes, to 3.8 times the angular velocity, which we don't yet know. And so all we'll do here is just take this guy and divide each side by 3.8. And then we end up with 9.31 radians per second is equal to the angular velocity. And so for the last bit, we need to find the moment of inertia, or we're given the moment of inertia and we still need to find the angular momentum. So we'll do the same thing, same exact, same exact formula, but just using different numbers. So as you recall, when I talked about earlier the Newton's law of inertia, this concept is going to apply here because we'll end up getting the same, the same number. And if you understand Newton's law, then you'll have a better understanding of this stuff right here. So we have this guy again. And then so we just put in our numbers. This time we have 3.8 multiplied by 9.31, which we got from doing our problem earlier with the updated information after we solved for the first bit given to us in the problem. So then when we do the math here, we end up with the same thing of 35.38 with the same units that are kilograms times meters squared per second. And so the other problems on this worksheet are pretty similar to this, this first one right here. And so that pretty much covers the angular impulse stuff. And as for now, this isn't going to be an assignment. I might have it as extra credit or you know whatever the case might be. But that covers the angular impulse stuff and I'll see you guys next week.